my favorite song that this part yes. does. Because the Lord is the best thing that ever happened to me. Stand with me, if you will, and take your songbook and turn to 232. 232, and we'll sing When I See the Blood. not on back there. There we go. I just wanted to say a few things. Janice and I love this church. We love everybody in the church. You are the church. We love you. And this is not easy for us, but we can't turn our back on her sister. Amen. She's 89 years old and she's got dementia. And we're going up there to help take care of her. So... That don't mean that we'll never set foot in this church again when we leave. That, that is, I, don't, I don't want to see that happen. But, but I just want you folks to know it's not easy for us. We've been here since 05. And Independent Fundamental, right out on the end of the fellowship hall, is what brought us in here. We prayed about it for a month after we got down here, where to go to church. And this is where the Lord led us, and we've been here ever since. Amen. Amen. And we love you, too. We really do. <clears throat> Say 
Is that the old ship of Zion I see? At the stern of the ship was the captain. I could hear as he called out my name. Get on board, it's the old ship of Zion. It will never pass this way again. As I step on board, I'll be leaving. All my troubles and trials be Sailing out on the old ship of Zion. Sailing out on the old ship of I wonder if we have any visitors here tonight. Any first time visitors? Brother Arnold's looking for some visitors. He wants to give away his paintings, his drawings here. No visitors? Yeah. Well, how about we all just stand up and shake hands and fellowship then? <laughs> Jesus. 
You know, I messed up. <laughs> yeah, Brother Frank. <laughs> that was my, my bad. <laughs> you know what? Sometimes we just get stuck in a rut. We need to change things up a little bit. So. You know what you need? I have to pray for you. That's what you need. Prayer. Lots of prayer. I need lots of prayer. Amen. 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 Right. So now we need to bless the offering. So let's not get this thing too far out of the way, right? <laughs> so Brother Frank, why don't you pray? Heavenly Father, what a privilege to be in your house and be under your control. Thank you, Lord, for all the help that we need from you, Lord. 
Thank you for the blessing that we receive in Calvary for your blood that is sharing for us. We don't deserve it, but thank you for your patience for with us. Bless us. The pastor bring the message for you tonight. And thank you for everything we do tonight in your name. In Christ's name. Amen. 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 Door in the fellowship hall, pastors, Bible study, spiritual warfare. Be in your place for that. If you haven't been, he said you're still invited. Amen. And we are in a spiritual warfare in this country. Amen. Amen. And then Tuesday morning at 10:45, assisted living, the visitation team they go out there to the facility at 10:45, at and then home visitations at 6 p.m. in the evening on Tuesday night. Give somebody a call. Encourage one another. Yes. Amen? Yeah. That's why we're here. You see somebody discouraged, encourage them. Because next time it might be you that needs the encouragement. Amen? Amen. That's just the way it works. And then Wednesday night is our light, uh, midweek service, the Lighthouse Teams and the Kids for Christ at 7 p.m. And then Friday night, our Reformers Unanimous class. I can't say enough about that. And it's just not for people. It's a discipleship class. It's just not for people with addictions. Amen? It's just you come in here and we study the Bible and do verses and stuff. Just We have a great time of fellowship. So Friday night at 7 p.m. Saturday morning, 8.30, Shell Factory Flea Market. They hand out tracts, invite people to church. But you don't need to be there to do that. You can do that anywhere. Amen? Amen. Just don't forget to be handing out tracts. And then Saturday evening at 8 p.m. is our church-wide prayer meeting right here in the auditorium. Everyone's invited. And if you can't be here, set your clock, pray at your house. Amen. And then coming up January the 28th, that's going to start at 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. The teens are, teens are going to have a yard sale here in conjunction with a car wash. That's going to be right here in the church grounds. January the 22nd, in the evening service, we're going to have the Lord's Supper, and I believe that's next Sunday night. So be ready for that. And then January the 29th, in the morning and evening service, we're going to have Mike Todd here. And also on that night, they're, they're going to have a youth afterglow in the fellowship hall after the evening service, and that'll go from the end of the service till 9 p.m. for ages 10 and up. And then a big thing is the Foresters are going to be here February the 5th in concert. Amen? Amen. But anyway, what time does church start? 10 o'clock. I mean to be here for Sunday school, 11 for the morning service, prayer meetings at 4.30, choir at 5, and it'll bring us right back to where we're at, 6 o'clock Sunday. Thank you. Man, I, will, uh, I forgot to mention about Rex and Janice. They're not going to be leaving until sometime after the 17th of next month. So we got we got enough of time to get tired of them again. So uh, I'm gonna miss them. I tell you what, I love both of them to death. I tell you this. Uh, you know, she's been my secretary for I guess what five or six years now, maybe more than that. I don't know, but I, I tell you, she does an excellent job. And uh, 
you be praying for Mrs. Channer because she's going to be my secretary. I need, you better be praying for the preacher. <laughs> but I tell you what, Janice kind of kept me in line, so I, I'm sure Mrs. Channer can. I tell you what, I just, uh, I need all the help I can get, and uh, I appreciate uh, Mrs. Channer's willingness to, and she prayed about it earnestly before she even told me she'd do it, and I'm excited. God, God always fills yes. the positions. He always does. Uh, it's kind of you wonder, you know, you know, it's going to hit the music department and stuff like that and all that. But you know, God's always got people, yes, he does. and He just wants somebody to be willing. Yep. And if you're willing, God can definitely use you. There's no doubt in my mind. And He also prepares everybody He uses. Uh, he's not going to just put a novice in a position. He's going to put somebody that. He's already gone through some trials and tribulations, and that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. And I'm excited about having Arnold here, and I'm going to turn it over to you now, Brother Arnold, and you just mind the Lord. Amen. <coughs> okay, thank you, Pastor. So everywhere we go in their evening services, we always have something for the boys and girls. And so boys and girls, come on down here and sit on this front row right here. Cheryl's going to do a story for you, okay? It'll you know, just be a few minutes, okay? Right over here on the front row. Great. There you go. Yeah. 
and so they got over there and they started their ministry. Go ye and the women. And so as they got over there and started preparing for the ministry and, and got, they got <coughs> together and they told them about the And they would listen, but you know, they had to think about it. And so as time went on, <coughs> time went on, time went on, and those kids were, no, 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 What happened to the food? It was gone. It was gone. But you know, the reflection came upon Mrs. Logan. She kept thinking in her mind. That doctor had told her when she had to have a medical examination, I told her, when you get over to Africa, you be careful because they got paws. They got crocodiles. And you better be careful those crocodiles are reaching for my children. And so she kept going about what that doctor was. But she said, when she told her, she says, no, God is going to protect her. I know he'll protect us. And he says, well, I keep a sharp eye over those crocodiles. No, God will protect us. And so she would reflect on it. No, she says, God's our people. And everything And so they got everything shift shape. But after eating and eating and eating, they ran out of <coughs> Oh, fish. 
And as it popped up, you know, with that crocodile's into that fish, go, whoa, chopped up his head, top, off his head. <laughs> and off he went. Whoa, what a miracle. Chopped off his head. And that old crocodile went right down the river. Whoa. But you know, another miracle happened. Yes, the body of that fish. right on top of the water. And you know what those servants did? They pulled in that fish. And you know what those seven kids had? Food. <laughs> <laughs> had food, and not only did they, but all the servants did. And the servants saw that day. Your God is different. He provides. But my God says, by all your needs, According to his riches and glory. Yes, amen. Amen. Always surprised the men. Out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. And all oh, they enjoyed that. But you know what those servants did? They said, You're God. He supplies everything. <clears throat> if he can supply this, then I know what you're saying about Jesus is true. And we want to ask him into our hearts. And what a day. Not only did they supply, God supply it physically, but he supplied spiritually. And that's the most important thing, that yeah. Jesus is in your heart. It's not, give me this, give me this, God, I need this. No, I need him to make the decisions. Say what I need. And then I need to serve him with all I have. What did they say? What did, what did they hear? Go to They went. And what a harvest. They healed it just because of that. Oh, Amen. may we be like the Lord and tell all those about us about Jesus. Yes. But the important thing is, is that he's in your heart. Yes. He's in your heart. You fit it in your life. And then tell those about you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you coming up here. <laughs>
the body of scripture I just read, and the first thing is that heaven is a real place. It's a real place just like uh, Jacksonville's a, new pl a real place, Atlanta's a real place. It's a real place, real location. Liberals deny its existence. They say it's wishful thinking on our part. But Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you. There you shall be also. Uh, in verse 1, uh, John says, I saw. And then verse 2 tells us, I, John, saw. John saw all of this as God revealed it to him. Heaven's a real place. And we're going to have a real body. Glorified bodies. A body very similar to the body we have now, but yet one that has been drastically changed. Jesus in his glorified body could pass through walls and yet sit down and eat. Not only that, but heaven's a remaining place, according to verse 1 also. Uh, the, the Bible uses the word, uh, words passed away. Nothing that you see on this earth is going to last. Everything's going to be burnt up. Everything's going to be gone. And so <clears throat> nothing's going to remain. We all like to have nice things. And we should enjoy them. But don't become too attached to them. They're not permanent. They're only here for a little while. And in the end, all we're going to have left is our souls. And uh, whatever we send to head to heaven, amen? Not only that, uh, but uh, uh, there is a hypothetical illustration given of two women. Uh, these two women uh, uh, lived together. One was very rich, and she hired a maid uh, to uh, take care of her home. The woman who was very rich uh, did not like to give, and she only gave grudgingly. On the other hand, the maid did not make much money, but she gave what she had, and she looked for opportunities to give. She loved giving to the Lord's work. These two women died, and uh, an angel took this uh, formerly rich woman around uh, in heaven, both of these people were saved, both the maid and the, and the uh, lady who owned the estate was saved. Said, come, I'll show you your new home. And so off down the lane they went, and they rounded a curve, and up on the hill was a great big mansion. And uh, the rich lady says, well, who is this that? And the angel said, well, that's your maid's home. My maid's? Man, if my maid lives in that home, I can't wait till I get to mine. Well, on down the road they went, rounded another curve, and the angel stopped and said, well, this is it. It was a cardboard shanty. And the rich lady says, really? Is this all I get? The angel says, well, we did the best we could with what you said ahead. So Jesus said that we store up our treasures in heaven by our works and by our gifts uh, to the Lord's work. We're storing up treasures in heaven. And so every state of sin, every evidence of evil is going to be vanquished. All that is going to be left is our souls and our spiritual investments stored up for us. And one of the greatest blessings about heaven is going to be approached by someone who says, I got saved because of your witness. I got saved because of your missions giving. I got saved because of your prayers. 
Uh, that's going to be that's going to be one of the wonderful things about heaven. Not only that, but heaven is a readied place, according to uh, verse two. And verse two uses the word prepared. It takes a long time to get the bride ready. Hours for the dress, and the hair, and the makeup. And the Lord has spent a lot of time and is sparing no expense in getting heaven ready for us. R.G. Lee, that great Baptist preacher, said this about heaven. Heaven is the most marvelous place the wisdom of God could conceive and the power of God could prepare. Not only that, but heaven is a place of relationships, according to verse 3. And this is what makes heaven, heaven, relationships. If the streets were not gold, but they were gravel. If the walls were particle board and not jasper. If mud was knee deep and weeds over our head, it would still be heaven because Jesus would be there. If you're lost, this thought ought to terrify you because the Bible says if you die lost that you're going to a, pl to a place where there is an absence of God forever. There is no way out of hell. There is no bridge from heaven to hell. The Bible says there's a great gulf fixed between these two. Those in heaven will never be able to go to hell. Those in hell will never be able to go to heaven. And in heaven, we'll see the only man-made thing. And as we study about what God is preparing for us, let us not forget the paralyzing sight of the nail-scarred hands and feet of Christ, a constant reminder of how we got to heaven. Heaven is not a reward for those who are faithful. We can't work our way to heaven. We will be elated, yes, but only because we are related Heaven is a place of relationships. Not only that, but heaven is a place of relief, according to verse 4 and verse 5. No more crying, sighing, or dying. No more hospitals, no more graves. And Satan is not going to be able to get a passport. There's going to be no more aging, no more wrinkles. The fountain of youth is going to be there. Nothing's going to ruin. Nothing's going to rot. Nothing's going to rust. Amen. There's going to be no thirsting there and no hungering, no itching, no blindness, no deafness, no diabetes, no cancer, no heart attacks, no scars, no witchcraft, no drugs, no alcohol, no tobacco, and no more pain. The New Jerusalem. God has by this time destroyed our universe, our heaven and earth. And this is a new one. Heaven is the capital city. We'll be able to roam far and wide everywhere. Sure. First of all, there will be not be as many people as is commonly believed in heaven. The Bible says the road to heaven is narrow, but the road to hell is wide. There's so many in hell, the Bible says, that hell enlargeth itself. Not only that, but heaven 
is a place of refreshing according to verse 6. Have you ever been thirsty? I'm talking about really, really thirsty. You don't want, you don't want soda whenever you're thirsty, when you're really, really thirsty. You don't want milk. You don't want tea. What you really want is water. Water. On earth, we pursue happiness without really finding it. But in heaven, every righteous desire will be satisfied once and for all. Friendships, relationships, knowledge about God, perfect health, and answers to that age-old question, why? I have a preacher friend that lamented one time, people think preachers ought to know everything. Well, let me tell you something, friend. There's a lot of things we don't know. There's a lot of things that God does, and I don't know why he does them. But in heaven, we're going to know. We're going to have perfect knowledge. And we'll be able to ask that question, why? Not only that, but heaven will be a restricted place, according to verse 8. And verse 8 is right in the middle of all these positive things uh, that were said about heaven. Uh, verse after verse is telling us all about how wonderful heaven is. And then God sticks this verse, which seems out of place. And here, verse 8 is a negative verse. It's telling us all about negative things about people and such and those who, are not be, who will not be there. And you might ask, oh, well, why does God do this? Why does he stick this verse right in the middle of such positive things about heaven? Well, I think it's because he's telling us sin will not be able to destroy the next world like it will ultimately destroy this world. The fearful. And there's a long list here of things that people are, uh, and sins that will not be allowed, rather. The fearful. Those who never accepted Christ, afraid to take a stand. The unbelieving. Didn't believe in at all in Christ or the Bible. The abominable. Not just sinners, these are abominable sins. And I've looked up this word abominable in the uh, 1828 Webster's Dictionary, the closest thing we have to the King James Bible. The definition of the word abominable is whatever is the object of extreme hatefulness is an abomination. So God looks at these sins as sins that he hates. It goes on to say that these sins are detestable. The word abomination also means detestable. God looks at these sins and he detests them. Leviticus 18 verse 22 says homosexuality is an abomination or it is detestable. Deuteronomy 17 verse 3 says astrology and horoscopes is detestable to God. Deuteronomy 18 says consulting a medium fortune teller or wizard or communicating with the dead have committed an abomination. It's detestable to God. Proverbs 20, verse 10 says, cheating in business, giving a false balance, is detestable to God. Uh, some of you might remember years ago when uh, you would pull up to a service station and uh, you, would, uh, you would pay for $10 worth of fuel, but you'd only get $9 worth of fuel. This has been years ago. It was a very common practice. 
cheating in business. So the state had to regulate it. The state had to hire people who would come around to these uh, service stations wherever they sold fuel and they would check and they would check and see if those those pumps were regulated right. Cheating in business is detestable to God. Proverbs 12 says compulsive lying is an abomination. Proverbs, Proverbs 16, a heart full of pride is an abomination. These are sins that God hates. Heaven is off limits to all these things. But don't miss this truth. Any of those guilty of these sins, any and all of these sins, these people can be saved. Isn't that wonderful? And born again. How many sins does it take to be lost? Only one. And murders. This would include all forms of homicide as well as emphasize. The true Supreme Court is not in Washington. The true Supreme Court, my friend, is in heaven. And unlike Washington, it will rule perfectly. And whoremongers, addicts of sinful sex, premarital, extramarital, wrong gender, pornography, and so forth. And sorcerers, that could mean witchcraft. The deeper meaning is pharmakia. It's where we get our word pharmacy, drugs. There are so many people drugged up today. It's hard to tell uh, what's going on. I was down at the gun range the other day, and uh, one of the guys working at the gun range says, uh, "I passed out the other day." He was about he's about seven. He, he was between seventy and eighty years old. He says, "I passed out yesterday." They took me to the hospital, or the other day he said, and. Uh, found out that I was over-medicated. The doctor had given me too much medicine, which is a common killer of old people. Amen. Too much medication. I read a book by a pharmacist. He made a career, an entire career, out of going around the country and talking to doctors and trying them to get them to reduce uh, elderly people's medicine. Because you see, it's a, a man's veins at 70 years old is not the same that we're at 30 years old. But he's given that man uh, the same medicine he would a 30 year old. Kills people. So I said, what's that, uh, what's that on your arm there? He said, well, I was in the hospital. I got an infection. <laughs> so this guy was, he'd been beat up pretty bad by, the, by doctors and, and hospitals. And I, hey, they do some great things. If I'm in a car accident, I definitely want to go to the hospital. I want somebody to, I want somebody to fix my bones up and sew me up and, and patch me up and give me a transfusion or whatever I need. But if I've got anything else besides that, I, I want a natural doctor. So 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 11 says, And such were some of you. After, after listing all these sins, uh, 1 Corinthians 6 and 11 says, And such were some of you. But, one day I'm going to preach on this word right here. This is one of the greatest words in the Bible. Amen. But, but, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus 
and by the Spirit of our God. Isn't that wonderful? But. But changes it. But God changes everything. He changes everything. And so, I want to draw for you tonight what heaven might look like, perhaps. Something of a shadow of it. The Bible describes it as a city. So let's have all the lights out and I'll turn all my lights up here.
stand together. You can be ready by trusting Christ as your Savior tonight. That's right. Amen. Let's have all the lights on, please. Thank you very much. Just for a short time, would you just bow your heads? I wonder if there's a man or a woman or a young person in the auditorium tonight who's not sure they're going to heaven when they die. Would you just raise your hand real high so I can see it and then put it back down? Say, preacher, pray for me. I'm, I'm concerned about my own soul. I'm not asking you if you're a church member. I'm not asking you if you've ever been baptized. I'm not asking you if you think you're a pretty good person. I'm asking you, friend, uh, have you ever been born again? Jesus told Nicodemus he must be born again. Is there anyone that's not been born again that wants to ask for salvation or ask God to save you? Just raise your hand right now. Anybody? Father, we're grateful for your goodness and mercy to us. You continue to bless us even though we don't deserve it. God, I pray that you'd uh, help us to reach others all around us with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We'll give thee the praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing just as I am without one plea as we sing that song. You come. Maybe you'd just like to come and pray tonight. You're welcome to come. Uh, maybe you need to join this church. God's led you to this church. You're welcome to come as well. Whatever your need. You come on the first verse. Come on. Now sing another verse. That's God's dealing with somebody here tonight. You need to obey that still small voice that's telling you, hey, you need to go down there and you need to make some get it right with God. Whatever it is, these altars are open. Let's sing one more verse. Some of our men come, we're going to take a love offering up for the Arnolds. And uh, how many of y'all been blessed by that picture there? Amen. Hallelujah, man. That's our final destination. Was there anybody that brought any visitors today at all? Yeah. All right, Jeff and Lisa. So anybody, how many did you bring? Two? Two and a half. Two and a half. All right. <laughs> Can it, all right, let's uh, let's go ahead and have the men taking. Anybody else bring any visitors? Now raise your hand if you brought some visitors today. All right, amen. Well, you can get the pick of the one you want. Yes, sir. Some of that. Somewhere else in the store, you have to search around and you find a black light bulb, 18 inches long, put that in there and you're invisible. That'll show the invisible chalk. I, I do this uh, picture in the, uh, this guy there, do that in the background before the service using invisible chalk and the black light is the only thing that's going to illuminate that. The kind of black light you use in the fish aquarium 
will not work. It has to be, uh, well, if you don't know, just ask some of these teenagers. They know where to check out. <laughs> yeah, amen. That's right. <laughs> amen. Well, it's been, yes, sir. You know, Jesse brought some visitors today on the bus. Well, saying. that's right. He did. How many did you bring, Jesse? Five, well, that beats two. Well, then you get the first pick, and then, Jeff, you get the other one. Amen. How about that? Yes, sir. Amen. Well, let's be closed, and Brother Mark, why don't you close us here tonight?